Hey guys, in this video, we're going to go over chapter 12, monopolistic, monopolistic competition and advertising. So um, this is the third market structure we have in this semester. Uh, so we went over perfect competition before, went over monopoly. So now it's called a monopolistic competition. So just by the name, um, so this monopolist competition is somewhere like a hybrid or in the middle between a monopoly and then your perfect competition. Okay, so first, what is a monopolist competition? So from monopolist competition, this is the market structure with many, many companies. Um, they produce differentiated goods and there's free entry for exit. Now, just by looking at these three criteria here, uh, you do see some sim similarities between your monopolist competition and then your monopolies and a perfect competition. Okay. Uh, so no, and also know what's a product differentiation. So this means companies, um, they sell similar, but somewhat different product uh, between them. Uh, so one example, think about the t-shirt. So if you buy a t-shirt um, from different stores, um, they all do the same purpose. They all have two sleeves, right? They all have the, the neck area. So, so they all look very similar, but different design, different material, different color, then you're gonna see different prices. So that is called a product differentiation. So some are similar product, but a little different. So, so consumer can distinguish between which one is which. Okay. Um, now, this is a comparison between the three market structures. So under perfect competition, you have many buyers, many sellers. Same thing for your monopolistic competition. Um, but in perfect competition, they sell similar product. Uh, in monopolistic competition, it's somewhat different. So differentiated product. Uh, for monopoly, there's only one seller, so that's different. Uh, and then for monopoly, they sell unique product with no closed substitute, so also somewhat different. But um, this one here, for a perfect competition, there's free entry for exit. And then for company in monopolist competition, there's also free entry for exit. Um, but for monopoly, they have, um, you know, there's a barrier to entry. Um, and then if you look at the, the prices for different companies, for monop for perfect competition, uh, the price will be low, um, but the market, the overall market will produce at an efficient level output where the price is equal to marginal cost. Uh, now, for Monopoly, they're going to charge a higher prices, um, but at a higher prices, this will be inefficient output, so therefore, their price is more than marginal cost. Now, monopolistic competition will be somewhere in the middle. Uh, so, for monopolistic competition, uh, if you look at the short run, now, for the short run, anything is possible. So, in the short run, company can make a profit, company can lose money, or company can just break even. So if you look at the, this each graph over here, let's look at look at A. So for graph uh, for graph A, or panel A, uh, the first thing you're looking for. Now this will be the same for your uh, for your monopoly, for your monopoly competition, for perfect competition. The first thing you're looking for is where the marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. So that will be right here. That's the first thing you're looking for, and then go down, get a quantity, and then from this quantity. Go to your demand curve, and then on the demand curve is our price. And then next, go to your average total cost curve here. That is your average total cost. So for this company here, your price is more than average total cost. So company making a profit. Now this is on this profit is only available in the short run. Now for the panel B here, again the first thing you do, marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. So that will be right here where the marginal cost is to the margin revenue. And then go down, get a quantity, uh, go back up to your demand curve, get the price, so price right here. And lastly, from the quantity, go to your average total cost curve, get the average total cost. So now your price is less than average total cost. So for this company, they are losing money. But again, this loss here is only available in the short run. So in the short run, everything is possible. So this is very similar to your company in perfect competition. Then in perfect competitions, anything is possible as well. You can make a profit, you can lose money, you can break even. But in the long run, you're gonna see something entirely different. So for the long run, remember this company has a free entry, or this market has the free entry, free exit, right? That means in the long run, if you have some company in panel A, they're making a profit, other company will join in and compete. Now, when other company join in and compete, 
that will drive down the demand for this company and then price goes down and then profit goes away. So in the long run, for a company in monopolist competition, they're just like perfect competition. They're gonna, each company will make a zero economic profit. So in the long run, your, um, your demand curve or not to make it, your, 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 your graph for your monopolist competition will look something like this. So first thing we do, marginal cost. Uh, what happened? Okay, so marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. So that'll be right here, marginal cost and marginal revenue, and then get a quantity, go back up to your demand curve, get the price, and also from the quantity, go to your average total cost curve, get an average total cost. So now you see that your price is equal to average total cost. That means for this company, they are breaking even. Okay, so um, so zero economic profit. Now this is the long run equilibrium because if, if you make a profit, other company will join and compete. If you lose money, some company will leave the market and then eventually everybody is all making zero profit in this long run monopolistic competition okay so this is the key remember this so in the long run everybody in perfect competition everybody in monopolist competition they are all making zero profit now there's a little difference between uh, your perfect competition and monopolist competition uh, for perfect competition your price equal to marginal cost from monopolist competition um let me go back so from monopolistic competition my price Price is right here, that is my price, but right here is my marginal cost. So in monopolist competition, the price is more than marginal cost. So this area here, we call this the markup. So that is like the, the potential um, profit margin for the company that's called the markup, okay? Um, so in perfect competition, your price equal to marginal cost, but in monopolistic competition, that your price is more than marginal cost. And we do have a markup for companies in monopolist competition. Now also for perfect competitions, um, your um, your price is equal to the minimum average total cost. Um, but for monopolistic competition, your price is more than the minimum average total cost. So for, for, monop for perfect competition, this is more efficient than the companies in monopolistic competition because they are producing at a lower average total cost than companies in monopolistic competition. And if you compare the two graphs, it's more evident. So if compared to two market structure, uh, in perfect competition, um, marginal cost and marginal revenue, and you see how this is also the lowest point of your average total cost. So companies in perfect competition, this market is very, very efficient. But in monopolistic competition, um, this is where the long run equilibrium is, but right here, that is the minimum average total cost. So your price is more than the minimum of average total cost. So the market is less efficient. And then there is a, there's a markup as well. And it is also something called an excess capacity. So for this market, they can produce more. So if you produce more at this point here, um, they can produce more. But they choose not to because the company is producing with a marginal cost equal to marginal revenue and then for this difference here that's called a excess capacity so a company can produce more and have a lower average total cost but they choose not to because if they do they'll lose money all right so um okay so we talk about this um we talk about that all right, so keep going. So um, if you look at the social welfare for uh, for monopolist competition, um, again, monopolist competition is less efficient compared to perfect competition. Um, in this case here, if you look at the social welfare, it's very similar to a company in monopoly. So for monopoly, you're going to see a deadly loss. Um, for, for, for a company, perfect competition, you will also see a deadly loss. And that deadly loss will be the little triangle right here. So that is the that we lost coming from companies in monopolist competition. So you do have a inefficiency in the market. Uh, and then they're coming from two sources. So first source is uh, the average total cost is higher compared to the perfect competition because the price is more than the minimum 
average total cost. And second, the company do have a markup. Uh, the price is more than marginal cost. Then in perfect competition, the price was equal to marginal cost. So compared to both, uh, both area here, you do see this inefficiency in the market. Um, so the market is inefficient. Uh, should the government intervene? Um, and it, the short answer is, is no. Uh, the government shouldn't intervene in this market. Because for one, remember we said that for company in monopolistic competition, then everybody is making a zero profit. So if company intervene with zero profit, which means company says, uh, which, which government says, uh, we're going to lower the price for the market. Or we're going to force the company to produce more good. When government does those, uh, when the company is already making zero profit and government still choose to you know, regulate this market, your profit goes down even more and then everybody will be losing money. So some company will leave the market, they will be out of business and there will be less choices for consumers to choose from. So that's actually inconvenient for many consumers whenever government try to regulate this monopolistic competition. All right, and also for, for our product differentiation, uh, not all product have the same degree of product differentiation. Uh, so for closing business, you're gonna see a high degree of product differentiation. So there's a huge difference between different brand of clothing. So if you buy something from Gap, compared to something you buy from Abercrombie or Hollister, there's a huge difference in that, right? So there's a high degree of differentiation. But for other companies, let's say you're your pizza company, so compared Domino and, and Pizza Hut or Papa John's, um, they are somewhere similar. I, I know some of you guys will tell me, oh, you know, you're so wrong. Pizza Hut is worse, Domino is better, or Papa John's is better. But you know what? To be honest with you guys, to me personally, I'm not a pizza guy. So I'm a very indifference between pizzas. So at least to, to, to you know, my kind of consumers, uh, that for pizza, there's very low degree of product differentiation. Okay, but for closing business, is a high degree of product differentiation. Different color, uh, different design, different material, different different product. All right, so for high degree of product differentiation, you're gonna see higher prices, higher markup. So that's why you see a huge price difference between, let's say, Gap or Banana Republic or J Crew, because there's a huge difference in the product. Uh, and there's also a larger uh, excess capacity. So that means this market here uh, is inefficient or more inefficient compared to a market with less product differentiation. Okay, so for those markets, they tend to have a low prices or lower prices, lower markup, more competitive, and lesser excess capacity. So that's why, you know, for, for pizza companies, they have, they have sales going on all the time. Like every Tuesday, they have a special or buy one, get one free. So those make sure have a lower prices and then lower markup and then increase in capacity. Now for product differentiations, um, if your product has a very high product differentiation, your demand curve tend to be more um, inelastic demand because consumers have this preference now. So it's more inelastic demand your price is higher, but if you have a, a, a more elastic demand, so again, in the market for pizza, um, so for my consumer, we don't care about which pizza you buy. So for those consumers, they're very uh, elastic. So a flatter demand curve, then you're gonna see a lower prices compared to um, the, the, the product with more differentiation. All right, um, so, so what made the difference? So what do company do? So if you're a company in this monopolist competition, how do you survive? Well, the key is to advertise. So that's why you see all the beer commercials, all the pizza commercials, all the clothing commercials, because those companies, they try to um, distinguish their product um, to make consum with consumers think that their product uh, is different than other product. Therefore, they can charge a higher price for that. So company do advertise heavily um, to change the demand for the product. And the idea is the more you advertise, uh, the more customer loyalty you build onto, and therefore the consumer will tend to pay a higher price for your good or, or name recognition, okay? So, um, so if you do advertise, um, you're, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna impose this idea of product differentiation on the consumers and then uh, consumer will believe there will be a higher part of differentiation and they will be in more inelastic compared to before. So a more steeper demand curve, therefore price will tend to increase whenever you do advertise. 
this company can ask for a higher price now. Um, so why do company advertise to increase product demand? Um, to provide information for the consumers, especially if you're a new product, consumer never heard it before, uh, then you, you have to tell consumer what it's about. Um, also, they will try to form a, a non-price competition. So company doesn't have to use price to compete with other product. That by just, you know, by just uh, presenting themselves in front of consumers, that's also a form of competition. So therefore, that's why some, some name product can charge consumer higher prices and the consumer still buy them. So, so it's not about the price anymore. It's about other form of competition. So consumer loyalty or name recognitions. Um, now one example, um, think about the bottle of water you buy, right? So, so you buy, uh, so some people buy the, uh, you know, small water or Osaka bottle of water or Fiji water. Now, especially the Fiji water, Guys, if you buy the Fiji water, that water did not come from Fiji. Okay, so that water come from somewhere, somewhere in your state. Um, but why do we pay higher price for that? Uh, because of advertisement. Because we believe those are better product. And also for beers, um, you know, different beer have different prices. But if you look down inside, most beers are very much similar. So why do consumer pay more for some for, for some beer over others? Was well, because of advertise, right? That's why beer companies spend millions of dollars every year doing Super Bowl to advertise the product, because they they all believe in that whenever you advertise, you can compete besides using lower prices. So you can still charge a higher price and then sell your good to consumers. All right, so, um, but if you look at different market structures, for some market, uh, advertising is absolute necessity. For some market, advertising is, is useless. So in perfect competition, company have no incentive to advertise. Because if you do, what's the point? That's why you don't ever see an advertising um, commercial for broccoli or bananas or printer papers, right? Because those, those, those are perfect competition. Doesn't matter what you do, they're the same. So consumer doesn't have a doesn't have to choose between which one to buy. But for company in monopolist competition, they have to advertise. Because once you advertise, again you have all this, you know, benefit you can enjoy. You can have a higher markup, charge a higher prices, have more demand for your good. Now on the other extreme, if you're a monopoly, there is no need to advertise. Because you know monopoly, you already control the entire market, then why even bother? But sometimes the company still advertise as a monopoly just to remind people that it's still there. Right? So just remind people that we still offer the service. So if you want a service, come to us. There's nobody else. All right, but there are some negative effects of advertising. Um, so for one, um, the, when everybody advertises, um, then it will be just a waste of resource. So imagine if Domino advertise and then to match the competition, Papa John also advertise. So both companies advertise and then they will, they will cancel out each other's effect for advertising. Then, then the end result is, is the two companies are wasting resource on, on advertising. So, um, so let me give you an example. Um, might be better with numbers. So let's say we have um, um, Domino's and Papa John. How do you spell Domino's? <laughs> I'm not a pizza guy at all. Um, Domino's, okay. So Domino's. Um, Papa John. Now, let's suppose right now with no advertising, so no advertising, um, each company control 50% of the market. So let's say each company's profit uh, let's call this one $100. Now, if you advertise, uh, you're going to have a, a bigger control over the market. Uh, so let's suppose if Domino advertise and then Papa John doesn't advertise, uh, Domino will have a maybe 60% and then Papa John will have a maybe 40%. Uh, so Papa John will have a lower profit, let's say uh, $80. And then Domino will have a higher profit, maybe $120. Um, minus ten dollars of for advertising, they will have a hundred ten dollar left, right? But if everybody all advertise, then we got a problem, because if everybody all advertise, then they will cancel each other out. 
So the market share will still be 50%, 50%. But now each company have additional cost of advertising. So their profit become $100 before, minus $10 for advertising, then they have a $90 profit. And same thing for Papa Job. So both companies still have the same have the same market share, but now with higher cost, both companies have a lower profit. So that's the downside of advertising. That if everybody advertises, then this will be bad for everybody involved. Now, next chapter, we're going to study something, something called oligopoly and the prisoner dilemma. I will go over more details in that. Okay. So just know, for now, know that, um, that the downside effect, if everybody all advertising, then it will be just lower profit for everybody. All right, so if you look at the long run average supply curve, um, the long run average total cost curve, when you advertise, you have a higher cost, and a higher cost again is inefficient. Okay, now another negative effect is that it will inspire brand loyalty. Now, again, uh, this is something from last, last chapter discrimination is not all bad. Loyalty is not all good. Okay, so just because you have a you have a brand loyalty, it doesn't mean you are good. You're doing something good. So imagine if you buy in pro, you buy some random pro from let's say Macy, cost you forty three dollars. You buy the same pro from Tiffany's, cost you three hundred dollars. So are you really better off buying Tiffany's? Maybe not, right? Because you buy the same pro. So why that happens? Because again, advertising. And then that will build a customer loyalty. Okay, so that's another that's another negative effect of advertising. Um, all right. So the last um negative impact, negative impact of advertising is that sometimes companies tend to lie whenever they advertise, so they will overstate their product uh, effectiveness, how good it is. Uh, therefore, try to mislead consumers to buy their product. So that's why we have a, a FTC. The so, um, Federal Trade Commission. Uh, so this guys, this this agency in the government, uh, one part of the job is to make sure that whenever a company advertise, they're not lying to us. They're speaking the truth. So it's called a uh, truth in advertising law. Okay. All right. So um, guys, that's it for this chapter. Uh, have any question? Let me know. Okay. I'll see you for next chapter. Bye bye.